So I found myself driving yet another Chinese car. Not all complaining, they're actually really, really cool. This one's also part of a Chevy stable and a few motors to be fun. I'm gonna take you on a full POV tour of this car because there's a lot of really interesting bits and pieces inside this car. So first off, I'm shooting this underground because I really want to show all the lights and things that are happening here and it's also lank windy in Cape Town. So that's the Omoda. It's a gorgeous sort of bluey green color, which I absolutely love. The front grille looks amazing. Big Omoda badge on the front. And with a key in my pocket, it does that whole proximity thing. So as I just walk up to the car, we'll see it'll unlock itself. Get here and the mirrors unfold and the screens and their light up. It plays you a whole song as you get inside the car. That screen is disabled while this is happening. You can start the car in the meantime, but there's this whole sort of welcome tune that gets played. There are gorgeous lights over there. So when I turn the car on now, lights around the door over there, this door over here. CarPlay has been fired up. You have a full digital screen in front of you there and um, you have this sort of whole layout. I'll show you the rest of the inside just now, but right now I want to get back out the car and I want to show you all the lights around the back. So for starters, this profile actually gives you a little bit of um, sort of Jag vibes. I think like F-type, that sort of sharp end. You've got these gorgeous lights over here, LED centered. If you hit the indicator, you have a sort of running indicator light over here. Now that's important because look here, when you get into the car, it immediately gives you this sort of 3D view of the car. If you look carefully, it's doing that in the animation on the car. So this screen pops up the minute you begin indicating and you can have different angles to the car. You see that whole camera moves around, the rear angle, etc. Obviously you wouldn't do this while you're driving, but it's still pretty cool that if you are turning into a tight space or doing something, you can kind of see that. So you've got a top-down view, you've got this angled view, you can also move it with a finger. That's just like a really, really cool feature. Screen's responsive, super high definition camera, super high definition screen. It's really, really good. So around the front here, you have your daytime running lights at the bottom, normal lights in the middle, high beams at the top, and your indicator running all the way across here, which is really, really cool. You also have an indicator stuck in the mirror there. I'm sure though, you are wondering, what this thing drives like. What does a 1.6 liter, 145 kilowatt Chinese car drive like? Okay, driving the Omoda C5, what is it like? So let's just start with some of the specs. This is a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine that produces 145 kilowatts, which is actually quite a lot considering the engine size. Fuel economy has been pretty good. So straight off the bat, did a bit of long road driving um, in the Omoda, came back like the low sevens per hundred. Um, in and around town, it's crept up to about 8.2 per 100, but uh, you could probably, if you drove a little bit more carefully, get over an 8. So that's pretty solid. Um, price tag comes in at about 600,000 Rand, um, which is not bad considering all the tech you get now. It is wireless car play, completely digital screens. There are hardly any buttons in the front here, except the most important button, which is the volume control button. That lives over here. Um, the rest is all kind of controlled through the screen. There's like a little touchpad thing here which allows you to control the aircon. So like when you tap it, the aircon comes up on the screen. The problem with that is if you use that to like rest your hand on pressing buttons on the console as well as on the screen, and that gets a little bit funky. But like you know to live with it, it's not serious. What I do find with this little car is that when you step on it, it actually makes quite a nice little noise. The throttle is very responsive, so like when you step on it, it goes. The only thing I don't like so much is that the brakes are a little bit squishy. So you need to brake hard and you need to brake suddenly. Um, it can be it can be quite challenging because you kind of really lean on the brake to really get it to engage. So uh, that's a little bit disconcerting. The first couple of times you find yourself in a position where you need to brake quickly. The seating position is a little bit um, tight. Sort of, you have a massive console over here or over here. The seat feels very cocooned. Now, personally, I don't mind it so much. Um, other people I know do mind it. Uh, but I, I enjoy the, the driving position. I enjoy the ride. The suspension, probably not as sophisticated as it should be, but considering that the equivalent German cars would cost you 300 grand more, you learn to live with the suspension very quickly. It's a little bit rigid, 
Um, not as bad as any BMW, but it's a little bit rigid in terms of road feedback. Uh, you can feel what kind of bumps you go over. So it's not a soft, cushy, pliable suspension. But it's not like a stiff, sporty suspension either. You kind of live somewhere in the middle where you kind of get a lot of feedback. But the highlight for me in this car is by far the center console. Okay, so I want to show you the coolest feature in this car and actually probably the coolest feature in any car I've ever driven ever. It is that section over there. You have all your usual stuff here, the volume knob, uh, handbrake, gear lever, etc. But over here, you have these two pads. That's an inductive charging pad, and that's where you hold the key when the battery dies. But both of these can hold two phones standing up. And that's really useful, because as you're driving, you can just have your phone there, you can visually, it's kind of, forms part of the overall screen thing there. It's like it's visually part of the screen. That is a very, very sensible feature in a car. Because everybody's got a cell phone. Nobody knows where to put the damn thing. And now you have two spots to put it. One of them charges, one of them doesn't. That is absolutely genius. Yeah.